When I was 17, I was diagnosed with cancer. I had a type of bone cancer in a small bone in my foot. And that meant that I had to have six months of chemotherapy and my left leg amputated below the knee. How many people here would find that a demotivating experience? <laughs> Most of you. Well, today I'm going to explain to you why it was actually the most motivating thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm also going to share with you some of the lessons I've subsequently learned about communication, leadership and teamwork. And I got put into a geriatric unit. It was uh, full of people your age. It was... <laughs> it was Hang on, though. When you're 17, anybody over 25 looks like a geriatric. That's what, that's what I mean. Something happened the day that I got diagnosed, in fact. Uh, like a light bulb went on in my head, and I suddenly thought, I don't know whether I've got six months to live, six years to live, or 60 years left to live, but I know that I want to make the most of the time that I've got. I want to be as good as I can be at everything that I do in the time that I have left. But to have multiple reasons when you're doing what you're doing, and especially what you guys are doing, to have more than one reason to do it. Have as many whys. I heard it, somebody say, you've got to have a why. Why are you doing this? Have as many of them as you possibly can. Because one of them will always work. If you've got a 127 whys, then it might take you to get to number 67 one day, but you'll still go out and do it. It got to the uh, Olympic trials in 96, and I'm swimming along, 400 freestyle, I'm going to walk along here a little bit. I'm swimming along, and I get to the end, and I touch the wall on the 400 freestyle, and I look up at the scoreboard, and it's the size of the, it's, it's bigger than the screen behind me. And I look up the scoreboard, and it says, Mark Woods, world record. And I think, yeah, I quite like that. You know, I think that's got quite a nice ring to it. I'm strutting along poolside. Mark Wood's world record, I think, I think that's quite nice, that. And uh, I saw him in the backstroke, I won that. And so I was going to the games, and I'm world record holder, fantastic. I got to Atlanta, I swim the freestyle in the heat again, and I touch the wall, and I look up at the board, and on the board it says I'm the fastest qualifier. Whoa. Yeah, world record holder, fastest qualifier. Uh, things are looking great for this evening, I can tell you. Swim in the final, swimming along, touch the wall again. I've broken the world record, yes! Come third. I'm like, how does that work? You know, I was totally focused on breaking this time. If I could break this world record, I'm going to win. But in actual fact, I should have just been focused on being the best I could be. Maybe I could have gone quicker. If I'd have just done that, rather than just go, I've got to hit that target, hit that target, hit that target, and then I'm just do that. But actually, there's a whole bunch of people hit a target that, was, that was, I didn't even think existed. Only good enough to win silver in 4.41.62. The team of Euron, Matthews, Long and Woods win yet another silver for the British swimming team here in Atlanta. I looked at the video and I saw the four faces of the guys on the team. Happy guy, sad guy, happy guy, sad guy. And I thought, what are those two guys looking happy about? We lost. I couldn't believe it. And I suddenly realized that was, our, uh, that was our problem. I was in charge of that team. I was what I call leader by default. Now, some of you will have worked in businesses where, where you know these people. They're in charge of a team, okay, because they've been there the longest, and they're technically good at what they do, but they don't have the skills to lead a team. Okay? That was me there. I was the fastest swimmer. I'd been on the team the longest. Mark, you look after the team. Okay. And my leadership style was a little bit like this. I would go, we can win the gold medal! And they'd do exactly what you just did. They'd go, <laughs> like that. <laughs> but they weren't bought into it. They were actually thinking, yes, we could win the gold medal, but we could get second or third. And I just want to go home with something. And there is a world of difference between wanting to win and being happy to come second or third. And, and, that's, and I learned that lesson there, and that was quite a painful lesson to learn. You know, I failed to get these guys on this team to all buy into one team objective. If you've got a group of guys with different objectives, then the team is really unlikely to reach its potential. 
And that's what happened there. When I got back from Athens, I went back to my local swimming pool, and there were lots of people coming and congratulating us and, and talking, to, talking to me about what had happened. And there was a chap there at the pool who was, it was the pool technician. His job was to make sure there was the right amount of chlorine in the water. Okay? He came up to me and said, it was fantastic watching you guys compete in Athens. What a team. I'm part of that team, aren't I? I'm like, yes, you are. That's what makes that medal special, is to realize that there are so many other people that are helping win things like this. Now, when you go away today, hopefully you're going to go away feeling that you're part of a great team, because you are part of a great team. Go away aiming to be exceptional and aiming to be a valued member of that team. Thank you very much.